for this job today, I'm going to be using, and for no particular reason, Ultra Tile Fix seems to be the brand, and it's pro level two flexible two part floor leveler. Um, it's an internal use, convenient to mix, moisture tolerant, and it's got excellent flexibility for timber floors and in the floor heating systems. Now, in this case, basically, I bought a load of materials for a job. Um, I was installing an underfloor heating system and this was the screed I was putting over the top. This is what was supplied with the electric and the floor heating system. This is left over and basically what you get is a full bag of powder by here. And then you also get, um, I think it's a 5 litre, sorry, it's a 4 litre bottle of liquid latex. And what we're going to do is mix all this up together in a mixing bucket such as this one, which I believe is a 20 litre flexible mixing tub you can buy them pretty much anywhere about four or five pounds don't try and put this in your standard 10 litre plastic builders bucket it won't all fit it'll be coming at the sides um, and then all we need then is a drill with a mixing paddle on the end or a specific mixing paddle if you've got one if you're a DIYer any old drill in this case is an SDS drill so I've had to put a chuck adapter that's got an SDS shank on it that converts it to a three jaw chuck, self tightening or you know manual tightening keyless, and then I've just got my paddle mixer then fix to the end of it. The next consideration is how much do we need? Well, in this case, I've measured this floor out, and it is approximately three square meters. Now, a bag of this, according to the instructions, should do six square meters at two mil thickness. But at a 5 mil thickness, which I'm going to need at least, it will only do 2.4 square metres. So I'm going to be using two bags, as that's what I had left over from the job. In this case, we put one bottle in of the liquid latex, first of all, the flexible two-part floor leveller. And then I pour the bag in with it as I mix to give me a nice sort of smooth consistency, as you'll see in a minute. And then once I've got that, so all the lumps and bumps are gone. Then I'm going to pour it out on the floor, then I'll mix the second one up, and I'll do the same. Don't try and mix them all together, it won't all fit. Preparation for the floor. What you want is a nice clean floor. In this case, I laid the concrete yesterday. You can see it's very shiny at the moment. It's still a little bit damp, probably. And I want to get the floor level down now, because when it's still wet, you'll tend to find it'll bond better than if you let it get dry and dusty. Okay, so clean it all out, sweep it out. If you're using it um, on an older floor then you may well want to buy a sealer system which is basically a bit like a PVA sort of water glue it comes ready mixed and you paint that onto the floor give it a couple of hours to go off then seal on uh, sorry screed on top of that in this case I've got a good fresh surface there's no dust no contaminants so I'm gonna put my leveler straight over the top of it and finally it's a good idea to have one of these, which is a spiked roller. And what you do is push it into the floor, right? Turns as you go, once you put the screed down. And what that will then do, that will bring all the air bubbles out and it will um, give you a nice finish. Spread it all around on the floor as you go. So it's the last thing we want. Right, so the first thing, give the liquid a really good shake. Put the whole contents of the bottle in. Right, so once you've got the full contents of your bottle in the bucket, Put the bag in like that. They've got these little pouring uh, things on them. Usually, complete waste of time. I don't know who designed them. So, all I'm going to do is rip that right out of the way. So, we've got a bigger opening. And I'm going to put about half the bag in. So, I'm on my own. If you've got someone with you, they can pour it as you mix it. But because I'm on my own, I'm going to put about half a bag in to get me started. So 
that will do us a minute. So there's the first half. Let's get your paddle mixer. Nice and slow to start. There we go. Now this can be a bit of a messy job. So if you're doing it in a room that you've got walls and that you want to look after, then you either want to mix it outside or you want to cover a few things up because it can splash if you're not careful. So they say to mix it for two to three minutes. So I'm just gonna get around here, get right into the corners, because what you will find is you get like a bit of sediment builds up in the sides. I can feel it there now that so you have to sort of really work into it. Up there it starts to go everywhere then look. And that'll do it for me. The one thing about using a, a good quality SDS drill with a brake on it is when you let go of the trigger, it doesn't keep flinging around and splashing everywhere. Let's get the rest of this bag out now. Get it right there, waste not, want not, put that out of the way. Right, so get that in there now. Right, so that's our mix done. So with everything out of the way now, I'm gonna pour the screed. In theory, I should have enough screed here to cover the whole floor, um, but that's only a couple of mil and I want a few more, so I'm gonna pour it to make it a bit thicker. And then all we're gonna do is just pour it in gently, like so, and then come by here, Pour it again, like so, and then pour it again, like so. And remember, I need to cover roughly half the floor, I've got two bags. So, what I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna shake that off in there now. Then I got room to mix the next one by here. All I'm going to do before I start mixing is get my roller and just run it back and forth a few times. Um, you can see the, the floor comp end finding its own level anyway. But I am conscious to make sure that we only cover, we cover half the floor with it so we're working on roughly the right thickness. See? So we're going to run through at that. And then we'll just drag it back like this. Now you can see as well, with the latex ones, this is what I find, is that you can drag it across and they very quickly, it very quickly refines this shape. Whereas the watery ones don't tend to be like that. They just tend to sort of stay where you put it. So you tend to, although it's supposed to be self-leveling, more often than not, it doesn't really, it only levels up the area you've worked it, if that makes sense. So all I'm going to do is just push it, I should do, yeah, get into the get into the floor, get the roller working, bring all that back from there rather than pushing it towards it. Back and forth like this. Bring that out to it halfway. Now obviously it's very, very difficult to gauge an actual thickness. One roller in it out, so you're just going to have to try and be as accurate as possible, push it around gently, get a feel for it. It's definitely a little bit thinner here at the front than it is at the back, that's fine so I've come slightly over halfway now. So whoops, I'm just doing some of that. So we'll just push it back and forth now a minute, like so. Give that a little tap off. 
put that into the back. All right, so with the second one mixed now, I'm going to pour it out gently, like so. And what I'm going to do is just pop that bucket out the way, pull the door to and just roll it behind the door first. Get to the areas I won't be able to get to once I'm out. Now if you've got an old pair of trainers or wellies, you can stand in this stuff if you want to. So it's not the end of the world. It's just I don't want to get my shoes dirty today. So I'm just going to spread it around into that bit there. Push it up into the corner here as well. Like so. Push that back there a minute. And I'm just going to put a little bit more out now. Then by here into the corner. Like so. And you can see with the latex what I was trying to explain. See how it all just blends in? Whereas you would already be seeing with the watertight ones, you would see a join where it overlaps onto the, the old one, onto the new one as it were. So I'm just going to run through this now. <laughs> And, um, and pouts around the house has just turned up the top of the garden shouting over the fence so that pretty much concludes what I'm doing all that's left to do now is to kick back give the bucket a spit a, a swill out clean up all the tools and then let it do its trick level itself out and tomorrow morning we shall have a nice floor that we can happily walk on and ready for a coat of paint. It's the following day now, the morning. It's been down for probably about 16 hours. You can see it's fully cured and set. Um, and there we have the finished floor. And just to show you that, I've just grabbed the spirit level to have a look. And you can see that that bubble is right down in the centre. If I put it lengthways, the floor is flat. If I have a look, there's no gap underneath the level. Hopefully that gives you a little insight into how to lay a screed floor. Sorry it's only a small job, but you can see the mixing process, how to lay it out, and what the finished results will give you. Thanks for watching. Speak to you soon.